99X. It's the morning X. Barnes and Leslie. Fram fall is in the air. Already feeling it. And you know what that means? Movies are in the air and a whole new slate of them. I'm the movie person. I love movies. I'm ready to get the real movies back in production so we can maybe have a good summer next year. But whenever it's a movie emergency like this, we go to Matt Goldberg, who's a film critic for the Atlanta Film Critics Circle. Hey, good morning, Matt. Morning, guys. How's it going? Hey. I know you've got a whole slate of movies. We want to hear all about them. Yeah. What are the things we must see this fall? So at the top of my list right now is Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon. I've been looking forward to this one ever since it was announced that he was going to adapt uh, David Graham's nonfiction book. It's an incredible story. And you've got Leonardo DiCaprio. You've got uh, Robert De Niro. But the breakout performance here seems to be from Lily Gladstone. And it's just an amazing true story about how the Osage people found oil on their land. And then they started being murdered. And it was sort of, why are these murders happening? How is it? How, what's behind all of this? And it looks like Scorsese has taken a really fantastic approach, looking more at the Osage side of things rather than the original concept, which was to look at sort of the formation of the FBI. Now, I know you mentioned Lily Gladstone, but, you know, this cast is insane as well. Brendan Fraser, Jesse Plemons. Again, another Scorsese hit. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like whenever Scorsese comes out with a new movie, it's cause for attention. There's nothing he is doing that is like, uh, I can skip that one. And this one looks amazing. It got really positive notices out of Cannes when it played there earlier this year. So this one is at the top of my list. Well, he must not have a very big um, promotion budget because I see him just doing his TikToks now. I guess it's all he put it all in the movie. (laughs) Exactly. You're Scorsese. (laughs) The name sells it. I don't think Scorsese has to be like, I'll, I'll come by. Please, please pay attention to me. Let's watch the trailer, Killers of the Flower Moon. Well, 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 our war hero has arrived. You made a good choice coming back here. Those we'll days are the finest, wealthiest, and most beautiful people on God's earth. They outsmart everybody. They have the say. Who gets the oil? Son, I got a question. You like women? <laughs> That's my weakness. <laughs> Well, we mix these families together, and that estate money flows the right direction. It'll come to us. Shomikasi. That's how you are. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. (laughs) (laughs) All right, another one to look forward to, I think, is The Marvel. You think? Hold on, whoa, whoa. I think that was a little reluctant. It's a little reluctant because I'm going to be honest with you. I think the Marvel movies as of late have been kind of disappointing. And I think this is kind of a turning point in terms of does this universe, this MCU, have staying power? And the reason I'm going to stick with this one is because I really like the director, Nia DaCosta, who previously directed the recent remake of Candyman, as well as this great indie film called Little Woods. And so I'm really hoping that the Marvels kind of turns things around for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, there's, it's like they're cranking out too much stuff. They are, and I think it was wise of them. This film was originally supposed to come out around July, and they decided to push it back to November to really capitalize and give people some breathing room between all the Marvel stuff. Uh, because the last Marvel movie we saw was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which I liked, but again, it's hard to have that staying power. And also, I think it helps to give Marvels more time to work on its VFX, One of the criticisms against Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is that the the VFX weren't very good. And I think the problem there was those animators didn't have enough time to really nail it. Did you hear Joanna Robinson on our show the other day? I didn't, but I have her new book arriving today, and I'm so excited. Well, we we got (laughs) deep into Marvel. You should go back to the podcast um, and check it out, the Morning X with Barnes & Leslie podcast. Don't search Morning X. You'll find something else. But let's watch this trailer, The Marvels. Carol Danvers. Prodigal child of the Milky Way. Nick Fury. My favorite one-eyed man of intrigue. How goes it out there? Uh, you know, cold, no air, space. Captain Marvel. The Annihilator. You took everything from me. And now I'm returning the favor. She's entangled our light-based powers. So we switch places whenever we use them. You can absorb light. I can see it and 
Kamala. Who's Kamala? Hi. She can turn light into physical matter, which I have never heard of. I could totally show you. No! Once again, we're talking to Matt Goldberg, our friend who's the film critic for the Atlanta Film Critics Circle, talking about all the best new fall movies. What do you have next for us, Matt? Well, I'm really looking forward to Napoleon, which is uh, Ridley Scott's new movie. And Ridley Scott, director of Alien, Blade Runner, Gladiator, and he's got Joaquin Phoenix starring as Napoleon. Now, this is a big, epic movie. I think that while not everything Ridley Scott hits is out of the park, he still can make great films. I really liked The Last Duel. And I think when you've got Joaquin Phoenix playing this titanic figure of history, it's worth attention. I was very close to this movie physically because I was at his vineyard when he was there with his team editing Napoleon, which is kind of trippy. The, all the talk, all the buzz, because they go in the basement of his um, winery and they go down there and they do, they bring, he brings the whole team and they edit there. So I'm very curious to see what he did. Yeah, same here, especially since there's supposed to be two cuts of the film, a theatrical cut and then an extended director's cut down the line. I do have to put in a little shout for uh, Vanessa Kirby. I've become a big fan of hers from The Crown, but also Pieces of a Woman. I really love her. Oh, absolutely. She's great. Let's take a look. Napoleon. What is your name? Napoleon. As the course of my life just changed. Napoleon. I'm destined for greatness. But those in power will only see me as a sword. I suggest you take the throne as a king. Shall we vote? uh, Another film I'm really looking forward to is Poor Things, which is going to be very weird, but it's the new film from Yorgos Lanthimos, who previously directed The Favorite and The Lobster. And this one stars Emma Stone. She is getting very high praise for this role. Some are saying it's going to get her her second Oscar. The premise of the film is that she is a woman that has been brought back to life, Frankenstein style, but uses that opportunity to sort of buck conventional trends of her age. And it looks very fun, very weird, amazing cast. You've also got Mark Ruffalo. You've got Willem Dafoe. Uh, It looks just bizarre in the best way. Yeah, when I saw the uh, premise for this, and it says black comedy fantasy. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, but it's Emma Stone, and I love her. Margot Qualley's in the movie, too. This looks good. Well, the, the way you know it's weird is Willem Dafoe's in it. Yeah, you know, sure. You know immediately it's going somewhere odd. Let's watch. She's an experiment. Good evening. Her brain and her body are not quite synchronized. But she's progressing at an accelerated pace. Tell me, where did she come from? I shall. For it is a happy tale. I am Bella Baxter, and there is a world to enjoy, circumnavigate. It is the goal of all to progress, grow. A woman plotting her course to freedom. How delightful. That's poor things. We've got one more. Room for one more. What you got, Matt? Last good one. Uh- I've got Ferrari, the new film from Michael Mann, who previously directed Heat and The Insider and Collateral. And it's a story about Enzo Ferrari. He's going to be played by Adam Driver. And it's the story of Ferrari's life. You've also got Penelope Cruz as Laura Ferrari. And I think it's just, this is a project that Michael Mann has been pursuing for a while now. It's exciting that he finally got it to the screen. And when you've got great actors in the lead role and obviously everyone knows the Ferrari name it should be a really exciting story and I will watch Adam Driver and anything but again what a huge cast Hugh Jackman Patrick Dempsey Shalene Woodley I mean this is incredible I love that Adam Driver is the star of the Ferrari (laughs) movie I love that am I a sportsman or a competitor If you get into one of my cars, you get in the win. You're going broke. How? You spend more than you make. So what do I do? Win the Mille Miglia, Enzo. Or you are out of business. All of us are racers. It's your deadly passion. Italy is looking for a scapegoat. Then he 
Uriah! You were supposed to save him! You promised me he wouldn't die! The father deluded himself! Sounds like a good fall in the movie theaters. Matt Goldberg, we always appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Matt. Anytime. Thanks, guys. The Morning X, X. with Barnes and Leslie. 99X.